Going in. The panel, communal parole is called to order at uh, 9.57 a.m. This is Thursday, February the 8th. We are now at the Madison Parish Jail. Uh, on the panel today, we have Mr. Mr. Mayor Bell to my left and Mr. Roche to my right. Uh, with the staff at Madison Parish Detention Center, will you please identify yourselves for the record? Jamie Inkola. All right, Ms. Jamie. Anyone else there? Lieutenant Klein. Lieutenant Klein. Uh, at the appropriate time, uh, we're going to ask your staff to, for you all to give us some input as to how he's been performing at your facility. Uh, I, I want to, you know, give your heads up on that. Whoever will have opportunity to tell us how, how many write-ups he has, just whatever you want us to know about how he's been doing at your facility. Um, yes, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, also, we have. Um, Mr. Randall Myers from the DA's office, he will be speaking. Uh, we also have uh, your family members, your mother, Miss Louise, and a sister, Miss Miss Penny. They are also be speaking. Remember, talking, Miss Penny is not speaking. Your mother is speaking. Uh, is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, give us your name, your DOC number, please. Um, Jamie Ankala, DOC number six two seven two nine two. All right. So, Mr. Jamie, let me explain the process to you. I'm going to read some information in the record, and then we're going to have an interview with you. Uh, and after we can finish with our interview, we're going to ask the staff there to share with us what they want us to know about you. Then we're going to let you, the, uh, the visitors speak. Uh, it's the support and the opposition to speak. Uh, yes, then after all the testimony has been given, and before we vote, we're going to give you an opportunity to make a statement. Tell us whatever you want us to know. Uh, usually they speak on the line of why we should vote to let you out. Uh, do you understand the process? Yes, ma'am. And I'm going to read the information to the record. I want you to listen closely. Uh, your name is Jamie P. Say your last name for me. Ankali. Ankali. All righty. Uh, DOC number 627-292. Uh, you're listed as a second offender. Your current office out of Jefferson is possession of heroin. Possession of heroin, two counts. Uh, possession of uh, nausea pain and possession of heroin. You have three sentencing dates, uh, August 13th to 14th, and then that supervision was revoked 420 of 21. Sentence August 13th to 14th, revoked 420 21. Sentence August 28th of 19, revoked 923 of 21. Uh, your parole eligibility date is listed as October the 17th of 2022. You do not earn good time. And your full term date is listed as August, I'm sorry, April the 17th of 2027. That sounds about right? Yes, ma'am, it does. Thank you. Uh, as your case was assigned to me, I'm going to begin the question. Uh, <clears throat> But you are in you're in custody now because of a revocation. So uh, tell us what happened with the revocation. Um, I, was, oh. I was in the drug court program in Jefferson Parish. Mm -hmm. And I started missing a lot of meetings, being irresponsible, and they wound up revocating it because I missed a lot of meetings. Did you start back using? No, ma'am. So why were you missing meetings? Really, I, I don't want to make any excuses. I'm, I had a, I had a lot it's going not, on. So, don't make no excuse. Just tell us why yeah. it's meetings. Well, my mom was in a hospital, and I, I had a lot going on with her, and I was just really stressed out, and I had my priorities mixed up. You know, I really should have been paying more attention to getting to those meetings yeah. instead of Put it, pushing it off to the side. I just had my priorities mixed up. Okay. Well, thank you for your honesty. It sounds like you've had time to think about it. Yes, ma'am. And how you could manage both, that, you know. But it's going yes. to happen. Yes, ma'am. Uh, at what age did you start using heroin? Um, like I was about 23 years old. Okay. And how old are you today? 31. Uh, 
what other kind of treatment have you had for your addiction? I've been to an inpatient treatment program. It was a 30-day program. Mm -hmm. I've Did also been to In the 30-day program. Yes, ma'am. What did it teach you? Um, the 12 steps, using the 12 steps to keep my sobriety and make better decisions on, you know, with my life basically. Okay, okay. And, then, uh, okay. and then you were gonna say another program you've been in? Yes, it was, a out, it's also, there was an outpatient program, Jefferson Parish Human Services Authority. Okay, you're good. You're good. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. And I completed uh, both of those. Good, good. That's good to hear. Now, um, this is something that was really concerning for me with your history, you know, of drug use. You said that I'm willing to attend AANA as stipulated by parole. Yes, ma'am. Uh, what do you think you need to stay clean and sober? What do you need? I definitely think I should attend Narcotics Anonymous. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I mean, really anything that's available to me, I'll, you know, I'm willing to, to participate in. Okay. I guess and we could be using the, the word differently. You saying you're willing. Do you see that you need it? Uh, is it something you're willing because if y'all tell me to, I will? No, I definitely, you? I feel like I need it. That way I stay on the right path and I'm not just, you know, throwing myself back to this place where I was when I before I got incarcerated. How much education do you have? Um, I got a GED, but I did go to high school. Okay. When did you drop out? Uh ninth grade. And how how old were you in ninth grade? Fourteen. And so what, what, what makes a 14 year old stop going to school? What was it? Um, I, well, I lost my father at that time. So that really made me stop paying attention in, in school. And I was more I'm concerned sorry. about being on the street. And then I eventually, it was it was a high school program that that gave me a it, it was you go half the half the day you go to a trade school, and the other half you you earn your GED, and I wanted to get involved with that program and that's what eventually led to me getting my GED and also a trade. What trade did you get? Um, machine tool technology, one and two. Good, that sounds good. Good. Uh, when we look at your arrest history, everything is about drugs. Yes, ma'am. Uh, and, and I do want to say that I'm sorry for the loss of your of your father, and it's unfortunate that you didn't get involved in good grief counseling. You know, we, that didn't that didn't happen for you. Uh, but you're still a very young man, and so I'm going to ask you again: What do you think you need to stay clean and sober? And stay out of jail. What do, you, what do you think? Definitely the help of of substance abuse treatment. Mm -hmm. Also, NA AA meetings. Also, because now uh, with the choice that you made, you're not there to help your mother. That's correct, ma'am. All right, thank you for uh, answering my questions. Anybody else have any questions? Uh, staff, would y'all please, would y'all want to tell us how, how this young man's been doing? Yes, ma'am. Uh, Mr. Ancolade, he's not a problem in May. We haven't had any problems with him. Don't know of any write-ups he's had since he's been here at our facility. And right now he's in celebrate recovery. He gets up, he goes, he doesn't miss any classes. Good to hear. Good to hear. That's good to hear. Uh, thank you. You're welcome. But uh, Jamie, uh, how many uh have you had any write-ups since you've been down on these charges? No, ma'am. Good for you. That's good to hear. Um, uh, so we would like to hear from your supporters now. Uh 
Your mother, Miss, Miss Louise, would you please unmute? Uh, you have three minutes to tell us what you want us to Ma'am, I apologize. I wrote a letter and my opinion is stated in that letter. Yes, ma'am, we did get your letter, thank you. Yes. Thank you so much. Okay, uh, now we are go to Mr. Randy Myers. Good morning, Randy Myers, this is DA Jefferson Parish. Um, I don't want Mr. Anglade to come back to, to jail. He's not being honest with the board. Uh, when asked why he was revoked, he said he missed meetings. Well, that's true. He did miss a lot of meetings. Um, you asked me if he if he started using again. He said no. He's during the time that he was in drug court, he's had I counted again this morning around twenty five positive tests for THC and alcohol. February of twenty one, he appeared at a meeting. He appeared to be intoxicated at a meeting. Um, which he denied. And then later in court, he said that uh, he had just forgot about the meeting. So, um, you know, he's got a serious, serious problem. If he's let out without going through, say, the Steve Hall program, he's going to be right back with us again. Um, and I'm not, I mean, he needs to come to grips with his problem. He's got a serious problem that he needs to take care of. And he needs to be honest about that problem. So we're opposed to his request. Thank you. All right, we have no further testimony. Um, so, Mr. Jamie, what do you want to tell us before we vote? Um, I just, I was, I'm trying to be as honest as, as I possibly can. Um, those drug tests that that did come up positive, they should have been re retested and came back as a negative. When I first got into the program, I was positive for marijuana eventually it got out of my system. But when I first joined the program, I was dirty with marijuana. But as far as any opiates or heroin use, there was no, I never tested positive for any heroin use. And that's, main, that's mainly what I, what I was focused on. You know, that's, that's why I, I said I didn't relapse or anything like that. That's what came to my mind was, did I use any heroin? Okay. So right. sorry, sorry if I misled, sorry if I misled, you know, the board. Yeah. All right. Thank you. So the panel ready to vote? Yes. Um, I'll vote first. Uh, but Jamie, uh, you need help. You, you need help. Uh, for me, my vote is to deny because of the law enforcement opposition, poor supervision history, and the strong need for long-term subsidy. Treatment. I'm glad you're in CR. I just encourage you to sit on the front row in CR and, and get the tools that you need to stay clean and sober. Mr. Mayor Bell. Thank you. Uh, my vote would be the same for the same reasons. Uh, Mr. Ancalay, you, uh, you are a typical drug addict who denies everything. And, uh, you know, uh, your explanation about coming into drug court, having smoked marijuana, uh, having tested positive 25 times just doesn't wash. You do need some long-term treatment. You need to look inwardly and quit denying that you're a drug addict. Till you do that, you're going to continue to keep coming to jail. Uh, good luck to you. I hope you can get some long-term treatment. Thank you, Mr. Russian. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Madam Chair, my vote is the same for the same reasons. Sir, your parole has been denied today, but again, we wish you well. Uh, you submit a request to get moved to Steve Hall, say the parole mm -hmm. board wants you to go, and, and it may help you get in. But best wishes to you and to everybody that participated today. We thank you. Your parole has been denied. Man, yeah. That, was a, that might have been one of the worst cases uh, we've seen. Um, you know, again, it's interesting that DA shows up to keep a, an addict in, in jail, but I mean, to his credit, he, he had a point. 
and he said everything. I agreed with everything he said. The man needs help. Not much else to say to that. With that, I'll let you go.